Hey folks, Neil here. Today, I'm going to help you get set up with spell timers and maps on Project 1999 using NParse. So, let's begin. Go ahead and open up your web browser. You're going to find the links for this application in the description below. However, be aware that if you try to search for this in Google, for example, you're likely going to find two different GitHub repositories. One is going to be the area that just has the development files, which is the web page that you see in front of me. If you're looking at this, this is not where we want to go. You want to click on this releases here, which will take us to a page that looks like this. If you're here, perfect. If you clicked on the link, you're already here. So what you'll want to do is scroll down until you find the zip file. Click on that file to download it. And then everything else is pretty simple from there. What we're going to want to do is create a folder in whatever directory. This could be where you have, you know, actual EverQuest installed or, you know, somewhere else I have multiple hard drives. So for example, I'm just going to put this in my C drive, create that folder, double click our zip. Important to note here. I had issues with transferring this over with my antivirus on. Now, after I installed it, ran it through the antivirus, didn't expect or experience any issues. A lot of people use this. Um, so, you know, take that again with a grain of salt, but make sure that your antivirus isn't on. And then just copy and drag into that folder you created or you can you know right click and expand it into there and once you have that you're going to notice that you have just these three files so let's show you how this looks once we've got it running so we double click on that and it's giving me the log error that's fine so you can see right now these are the two main menus and we'll go into the game here in a moment to show you what it actually looks like but this is what you can expect you'll see these two windows and we need to tell uh and parse where our log files are for everquest uh just to explain exactly what this is doing is in everquest you can turn your character log on and that basically tracks you know all the text that goes through on your character well, what nParse will do is it will use your slash LOC location to show where you are on the map. And then it reads all of the spell feeds that go through, you know, you casting at somebody, uh, you know, buffs, all that stuff gets captured as it goes through. There's a couple of things we'll set up that I'll show you here in a minute, but let's actually get it smart enough to know where to find those files. So in our system tray, we're going to right click on that NParse logo. We're going to select EQ logs directory. And I will show you where mine is. So we go here, find Sony. That's where mine is installed. And you'll notice that there is this aptly named folder called logs we double click on that or just click once and then you'll hit select folder then once we go into the game i'm going to do some fast forwarding here three things before we get into the features of npars one this is a program that will always need to be run alongside everquest that means it's not automatically going to load the moment that you get into the game it's very much like that borderless gaming application we covered in the last video two if for some reason you find that your end parse windows are not displaying like you see them here what you'll want to do is go into your system tray right click on end parse and make sure that maps and spells are both check marked conversely if you don't want one of these showing up you uncheck one of those and it'll just be waiting for you to check it again at a later time three 
If you have another monitor, you can actually move both of those windows to that additional monitor and they'll work just as if though they were overlaid on the game. Pretty neat feature in my opinion. So, without further ado, let's get into the actual features and how to work these. Okay, let's dive into the map window. First stop is going to be these six rectangles in the top left. We click on these and you'll notice that we now get this toolbar. This toolbar is what allows us to move the window around our screen and resize it. So if you want something super big or you want something super small, first you're going to need to click these six rectangles. Once you've found the position that you want and you're good with the size, click that again and you won't be able to interact with it until you click it again. Good to know, right? So next step is in the top right here, we see some icons. The first icon is going to be able to show you points of interest. These are going to be mobs in a zone, uh, NPC merchants, things of note. You can turn that off to give you a more simplified view. Like for example, when you have everything kind of in there and you're zoomed out, it's really hard to see, but you turn that off and it becomes a bit more clear at high elevation. Turning that back on, we move to our right. Now let's say you want to get yourself back centered because again, you can navigate the map by using your up, down, left, right keys to look around if you're trying to find a specific location. All you have to do is click that auto center button and boom, you are in the center of the map. Next is this show Z layers. And this is just, imagine this, you know, let's say you're in a house and there's a basement, there's a first floor and a second floor. Each one of those floors are a Z layer. And so if you do not want to see something that's above you or something below you, all you do is click that and the map will do its best to show you only that layer that you are on. Next, there is the show grid. Personally, I don't know what the grid really does for us as you know, you're, you're kind of only seeing what the zone is. So if there's something beyond there, please feel free to drop in the comments what that does. And I can add that into a video uh, later if it's useful. Finally, there is this show location under mouse pointer. This is neat so that if you're not sure if you need to give somebody like, hey, Orc Scout Man is over at negative 99, 722, you can do that. But if it's annoying to you, you can always just toggle that off and you will not see that show up. So again, you want to navigate that or you want to move that around your screen, click on those buttons, get it into a nice cozy corner, click it again and you're good. Okay, now for my favorite part, and that is the spell timer, which we can see below here. There's some important things that, well, really, there's only one important thing that you have to make sure to consider uh, when setting up your timer, and that is this area right here. You'll notice that this number is set to my character's number. I'm a little 48 magician, and so I want to make sure that this number reflects 48. Uh, for those people that are playing multiple characters, it's going to be kind of a pain for you because you'll have to go in and change this as necessary. So if you go and play a level one alt, for example, you'll need to come in here and change that to level one. And why that is, is because with EverQuest, certain spells are impacted by your ability and your levels. So they might last a little bit longer in some instances and some instances they may not so it's always good just for peace of mind to make sure that you have this set to whatever your current level is and once you do you just cast your spell so for example i'm going to cast my damage shield on me boom so you will see this show up for each person you cast it on that includes any spells that you know you might throw on a mob or throw on yourself or your friends and if you want to for example let's say that group member leaves uh your pet dies you've summoned a new pet and you want to get rid of those old timers all you have to do 
is double click and it disappears. So that part's the easy part. And at this point, you're all set up. If you have any questions, you can feel free to reach out to me. I can try to help you troubleshoot. Uh, but honestly, I think you're more than likely going to get this up and running long before I ever, you know, finish talking to you. And uh, I, I hope again that the video is useful. And if you guys have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. Uh, I'm over on P99's forum, so you can reach me there at Loiterius. It's odd that, yeah, it doesn't match up with my YouTube or this, but hey, I can't get rid of that 2014 rep, so what can you do, right? Anyways, it's been great. Sorry for the delay on your videos. Caught COVID. Wasn't fun. Recovering, though, and, and I wanted to get back on the horse and get back to making videos. Uh, I look forward to playing with you all. You can reach me here at Buckshort, or if uh, you find me around in my alt right now, I'm playing Hofbrow, the cleric. Uh, I'd love to talk with you, get to hear what you guys think would be great for the community to know so that I can continue to make uh, videos. Thank you guys for watching. Hope you're all having a great week. See ya.